element of journalism in Sierra Leone, both um, the success and the challenges as well. Are you trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> No, but I just want to have your view about it. Well, um, I think that in order to really provide good context, it's good to go back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I started broadcasting in Sierra Leone, it was in 2009. <coughs> There's only one TV station. Um, internet access was maybe like 1% of the population. Um, the majority of journalists that we had were people who maybe had fallen into the profession just by happenstance or traditional journalists who were only print journalists. Um, if you fast forward to today, we have like maybe <coughs> four TV stations, um, lots of different presenters, lots of different types of journalists, multimedia journalists. Um, and there's an evolution, like things have really grown. Um, if you compare the state of journalism in Sierra Leone with other places, <coughs> I think one thing we really lack is um, formalized training. Um, we do have a school of mass communications, but it's di mass communications is different from journalism. Um, and <clears throat> I've been to the school of mass communications. I did uh, a free digital workshop there a couple years ago, and I was surprised, for example, that every student there didn't have access to a computer. Every student there didn't have access to a camera. Every student there didn't have access to a video camera. Every student there didn't have access necessarily to the internet, free Wi-Fi on campus. These were the conditions under which I learned journalism. Um, and in the world that we live in today, it's not enough to just be one kind of journalist. Um, being, being a good news writer is great, but you also have to know photography. Um, I can write, I can shoot photos, I can edit photos. I can produce uh, new segments, I can shoot video. When I was learning how to be a journalist, when you're a producer, you're also the host. So you're filming yourself. So I have the camera with myself, the tripod by myself, on location, setting it up by myself, turning uh, the viewfinder to position my head, hold the thing, and then trying to stop people to interview. So even though it was like really rough training, at the end of the day, you come out of it really, really balanced. Um, what I'm trying to do with the Vicky Remote Prize is to really find um, those who are climbing the good tree of multimedia production or multimedia journalism and pushing them up. Um, so if somebody's a really good writer, if they're a really good news journalist, if they're a really good uh, videographer or they're a really good photographer, what I want to do is like say, hey, first of all, here's like a new, the new school of multimedia journalists in Sierra Leone who are doing well, spotlight them, but also bring them in to give them additional skills. Um, we've create, I've, I've reached out to a bunch of Sierra Leones that I know in the media industry, um, both journalists and producers, both here and in the diaspora. I'm working with um, journalist friends at NPR and BET, and we've all kind of come together to create a panel. So then we're not only going to say, okay, here's money, you know, great job. We're also gonna create a six month mentorship program where everybody who's a winner of the prize can learn from us and we can also like really guide them, especially with digital. Um, I think that there's a huge, huge gap in terms of like digital reporting and, and, and multimedia publishing online. Um, the saddest thing about Sierra Leone for me is that if you were to go online today and you were to Google Sierra Leone and you click over to images, the first three pages are all content and photographs that have been created by NGOs and development organizations. There's nothing wrong with that, but unfortunately it means that this is Sierra Leone according to the aid industry. And what, how does the aid industry, what do, they, what do they live for? They live to raise money, right? So there's only one kind of story they'll continue to perpetuate, and that's that Sierra Leone is in dire need. Sierra Leone is poor. So you see a lot of bay, you see a lot of shanty towns, and you see a lot of poverty, because that's what the aid industry needs to share to get the resources they need. What I would like to see when you search for Sierra Leone is for it to be the first three pages to be Sierra Leonean content created by Sierra Leoneans. Let us be the ones to be framing the narrative around who we are and what we do. And that's what I've been doing for, the la for over a decade um, on multiple channels, like my TV show, um, you know, my social media platforms, my blogs. It's really to make sure that if somebody goes online and they look, about, look up Sierra Leone, they'll get it according to somebody who's from Sierra Leone. Um, and also, you know, I've been doing a lot to train people. Um, I know a lot of people have seen a proliferation of bloggers on Facebook. You probably have me to blame for that. Um, because in 2019, I started doing blogging workshops. 
um, because I couldn't find people to hire. I wanted to hire people for my blog. Unfortunately, I wasn't a part of it because I applied. But you don't come because it was free. People that me, they registered, they know they show up. And I'm just like, oh, okay, y'all want to, okay, fine. But the people who came, I mean, Grant said, okay, there's still a lot of room for growth. But it is progress, right? Maybe the kind of content, violence, which is what is like <laughs> trending right now. Um, maybe we can shift that. Maybe this is like um, digital media version 1.0. We'll get to version 2.0 and 3.0 where the stories will be more about entrepreneurship and and. and and create creatives and really uplifting stuff about Sirilu because at the end of the day, um, we need to see ourselves positively represented so other people, young people can believe that um, they can be journalists, so they can be entrepreneurs, so they can be all these great things. Um, but it, it starts first with the kind of contents we produce and if you wanna change the content we produce, you have to improve the quality of stories and the only way you're going to do that across any platform it's by making sure you you upskill the people telling the stories the photographers the journalists the right the writers and the videographers and also the content creators on TikTok because that's really important, important too yes. yeah well, um, with this initiative what do you really seek to achieve um, at the end of the day I I want to clone myself it's really the truth um, I'm a very skilled multimedia professional but we don't have a lot like me. Sierra Leone needs hundreds of me, right? One, because the more skills you have, the more money you can make, and the more money you can make, the more choices and freedom you have, and then you can talk a lot of bleep about anybody because you got it like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I want Sierra Leoneans who are young to, to got it like that. Like, I don't want our, you know, our young folk to be waiting till they're 50 and 60 to really manifest their, their destiny and live their dreams. So for people who are in the media and people who are in journalism, I want to give them the skills that I have um, and, also, and amplify them and let people know, hey, this person is who you should be talking to for phot photography. You know, the UN shouldn't be bringing, um, and no pun to anybody, but the UN who's here doing stories shouldn't be importing photographers, you know, white people from other countries to come do work here. The UN shouldn't be bringing in white photographers from other countries, video videographers to come make documentary films here. Everything that we do here should be done by skilled Sierra Leonean professionals. I don't blame them for doing it, but if we focus more on giving people the skills they need, then you know, they'll have the earning capacity to, do, to, to, to earn and to do the work. Now, now let, let, let's focus, focus on the four categories. Um, I'm, I'm, I went through um, the, the portal on Google, um, and, um, the form, and I see a space there also for, you know, you, you have to do a write-up you know to express yourself and why you want um, um, this price why you why you going in for this but why focus on these four categories so in terms of kind of like multimedia production these are the four important parts you need to know how to write the news you need to know how to document uh, pictures and photography you need to know how to tell moving pictures, so video. And then, you know, content creation for me, like, it's, it's real. I love, I love content. I love good content. I love the possibility of what a short 30 second clip um, can do. For example, like, you know, on the International Day of the Girl, no, the International Day Against FGM, I did a short TikTok video um, about, you know, my views on why you should protect the clitoris <coughs> instead of cutting it off. And you know, it went viral. And that was part of a conversation that a lot of people then were, a tool that a lot of people were using then um, to talk about the issue, but not, you know, like what content creation allows you to do is like be a little bit more playful instead of like a very serious report about FGM that people aren't, may not read, you have like a different medium. So the categories are there because I feel like these are the four pillars of multimedia journalism. They're the four pillars of content creation. Like, Anybody who can master any one of this or any two of these categories is going to have a lot of leverage, a lot of opportunities, and it's going to be very employable, and that's, that's what's important. Um, at the end of the day, I can go somewhere and I can charge somebody thousands of dollars to produce a documentary. Um, right now we're working on a project for a client. The budget just keeps growing, and it's like over $50,000 to produce this documentary. Um, that includes equipment, production costs, et cetera, et cetera. But in order for a, a Sierra Leonean person to be able to earn that much, you have to have the skill sets. Do you understand what I mean? Like, we all have to do better in terms of the, what we bring to the table. And if we can give those additional skill sets to journalists here, they can earn more, and also they can tell better quality stories. 
And if they can tell better quality stories, who benefits? It's the entertainers, it's the entrepreneurs, it's the movers and shakers, it's the, the politicians, <laughs> <laughs> the athletes. It's the people that, you know, are doing the, they're Work, building yeah. the nation. Um, a lot of times when I travel out of Sierra Leone, people think that, oh, you don't have any Sierra Leone in this. Like, who's doing this in Sierra Leone? And I'm like, oh, no, they're there. But because when they search for us, they don't find, find us, us online, yeah. they just assume that we're not there. And I, that really offends me. So my job is to put Sierra Leone online, whether it's print stories, digital stories, whether it's photos, social media content. Um, I just want us to be in the mix. Okay, quickly before we go to Leonos, um, who exactly are you targeting in this competition? So the Vikramo Prize will award up to 200, okay, first of all, before I mess up the <laughs> currency, so in the old Leon, it, it's 200 million, and in the new Leon, it's 200,000. So we're giving 200,000 Leons in the new currency in 10 categories, including print, photography, uh, videography, and um, uh, content, content creation. creation. And we're doing five men and five women, so for the 10, the 10 prizes. And the prizes range in, in from 10 million to uh, 30 million. So you know, news writing, there are four prizes for 10 million, and then the other ones are like two, two each, and it's 20 million and then 30 million. And ultimately, I'm looking for people who are really bright, but really passionate about the media, um, because people who just fall in to do something because of angry <laughs> belle, they're less likely to stick with it. I, the reason why there's that thing asking people for a personal statement to say mm -hmm. why they want this prize is because I want it to be people who really, really have a passion for storytelling, because the, if you have a passion for storytelling, you know, first of all, it's really hard work, right? A lot of times we're out there, you know, like I was on location yesterday in Tumbo. I woke up at six o'clock. You know, you, we just yeah. go wherever the story is. And those are the kinds of people, you know, they're already doing well. I believe in spotlighting people who are already doing well, giving more opportunities to people who are already doing well. Because if person already they do well, you know, you know, you know, they will claim the tea. Now the way already don't get a rope around, you know, you don't mass mass it all each halfway, then you can come <laughs> and, and push, push them up. Yeah. And so that's what we're trying to do: finding excellent storytellers so that we can give them more skills and amplify them. Okay. All right. Let's let's talk more about the competition. I mean, the storylines that. Um, the participant will be doing? Will there be coaches that will guide them through uh, um, the oh, competition? Oh, so what we're rewarding are content that's already been published. So if you're a journalist, where when you click on the application for the news prize, you have to upload an article that you've already written that's already been published or, or linked to it. And so it's work you've already done that will win you the prize. Um, and if you're a photographer, we're asking you to put, upload like eight of your photos. If you're a videographer, we're asking you to send us like a film you've made. Um, and if you're a content creator, we want you to send us like links to your content, um, wherever it's hosted. So people are being awarded the prize for contents they've already created, journalistic work they've already made. Now, once you win the prize, yeah, you get your cash and that's it. But over the six months period that the mentorship program will happen, we, you will basically connect with um, myself and other uh, creatives who, and media journalists who are also on the panel. I'm not one of the people selecting, by the way. Okay. It's just like I created the prize, but the people selecting will be will, will, a part of the people. I will be part of the mentoring program. So um, helping journalists, for example, understanding how to keep a portfolio online, um, whatever content creator you are, uh, maybe helping influencers about how to price themselves, how to like value the work, and also how to pitch um, to potential businesses to like sign you on as like a brand ambassador. Um, I've signed lots of different kinds of brand ambassador contracts, um, and I think like I'm uniquely positioned to help people understand, you know, how to negotiate, how to ask for more, how to get your worth, because yesterday's price is not today's price. Mm -hmm. And um, understanding that language is also important. And then for the photographers and the videographers, we're basically going to help them, um, again, understand how to sell their work um, by um, helping them prepare their portfolio, how to help them engage in the communities that they work in because you know, when you're a photographer, there's a global community of photographers. When you're a videographer, there are different places where you can um, host your work so that you can get recommendations, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, um, what I think the internet offers all of us 
is an opportunity to access the global market pl marketplace. Um, Sierra Leone is a very, very small market. Our economy is very small. And there are certain things that even if you're really good and worth more, because the size of our economy is so small, you can't really be paid what you're worth, right? But what the internet and digital offers us is the opportunity to then say, okay, fine, maybe I should be hired not just to produce content in Sierra Leone, but I could go do a documentary somewhere else. But in order for them to find me, there's a certain way I have to speak about myself and showcase my work online for people to be able to find me. Um, one of the things that I've done professionally um, with intention is to be hyper visible online. Hyper visibility means like people see you. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, I put so much content online that for people who are searching about information in Sierra Leone, you're probably going to see my content, whether it's the Make Sierra Leone Famous podcast, whether it's the Vicky Ramo show, whether it's sweetsalon.com, whether it's vickyramo.com, whether it's my Twitter. I mean, I reach millions of people every year on my platforms. And a lot of the opportunities that I've gotten um, are because of people seeing my work online. And I want that for other people. Um, one of the things that I, I tell people who are uh, doing blogging on Facebook is that it's microblogging. And I've said this before and I'll keep saying it because it, it's doing a disservice to them. So when you have a blog, you usually have an IP address or a web address, which is discoverable by a Google search. So if I'm, let's say you've written a blog about Marina. Um, if I search for Marina or journalists in Sierra Leone, I'll be able to find that story about Marina because you've published it on your, your blog. blog yeah. If you write about Marina and it's only on Facebook, if I search on Google, I'm not going to find what you wrote about Marina because it's only on Facebook. Only the people who like your Facebook page mm -hmm. are and within your social network will see it. I won't be able to see Marina. So maybe there are 500 stories on Facebook, Facebook. about Marina. But if I'm not on Facebook and connected to the Salon community, I'll never know who Marina is. Seems like there are more to this. Yeah, so, so, so then when people, let's say somebody in the UN somewhere is like, oh, we're looking for female journalists from Sierra Leone to bring to an event in New York for uh, uh, the uh, General Assembly. And they look, they're not going to find you. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? And so if, if all the content we're creating is on Facebook, it's closed. And that's doing nobody. So all of the stuff about the artists, the, muse, the, the, the entrepreneurs, everybody is locked inside of Facebook. And we just did talk to Wisef inside mm -hmm. Salon. And it's not uh, going uh, on. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they're just perpetuating violence. I'm like, you people don't even understand what's going on. There's so much that's just like here. But so you're, you're just putting it on Facebook. That's not enough. Right? You have to go and get a blog. You have to like, or find a blog that already exists and submit your content to them. And if you're a content creator, you need to have a byline, meaning that your byline is like your name underneath the content that you create. So that also when I'm looking for a journalist from Sierra Leone and I Google journalists from Sierra Leone, your yep. work will come yeah. up on Muckrack. Muckrack is like a free platform that aggregates Freely content, so like this is a lot. But before well, I go, we've, 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 we've gotten a few bits. Oh, I brought yeah. you, I brought you free copies of yeah. my books mm -hmm. um, yeah. because I don't think AYV, AYV has them. So I wrote these books, and um, a print for Ami. A print for Ami is my new one, which is coming out. Well, it's been out for a while, but we're not being print time because money. Adama loves Adama loves her. Adama loves yeah. her car, you guys already yeah. know. But this mm -hmm. one's coming out, so I want to bring a copy. But my my my, my message to Sierra Leoneans in general is that like, you know, when I got started. People said that, you know, hey, this because I just like attention. It's true. I do like attention. Um, and what I've done with that attention is I've created so many opportunities for myself. I've written books. I've produced a TV show. Um, I do a podcast. I'm online. I'm making sure that I'm disrupting whatever would keep me locked down and closed in because I'm young, because I'm a woman, because Posse not like me, because of the, et cetera. All of those things that would limit my opportunities can't limit my opportunities because I'm already out there and there's nothing anybody can do about it. So I tell people to embrace digital, find something that's your niche, if it's photography, if it's videography, if it's reporting, whatever your thing is, embrace it and constantly be publishing it online so that 
opportunities don't pass you by. Right, um, so quickly I, I, as we I, wrap up, um, mm -hmm. um, how long is this competition going so to take? So the application opened on my birthday, Vicky Ramo Day, <laughs> <laughs> November 14th. Mark it in your calendar. Um, so if you want information about the Vicky Ramo Prize, go online and look for Go to vickyremo.com so you can get the application. That's another way to gain more. <laughs> you can also just check the hashtag Vicky Remo Prize because I've been using that hashtag across all the social media platforms. Um, the application is open until February 1st. Um, so basically, if somebody hasn't applied, they, can, they still have time. Um, and you need three recommendations, people who will recommend you as part of your application, you upload your content, and then you send it. I think I'm, I'm at that point now waiting yeah. for my You know we talked about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, for just ask Fossey. So, so because we will call. Mm -hmm. so, I know. Like, I know. Wow. So, so what, what people usually do is they'll just put people's name, name in. Yeah. I, no, I, I know so what So, light and day on the guidelines say, make sure, say, you tell the, the person, person say, mm -hmm. are they apply for this thing, and I go need you for supporting me. Because we will call them. And if we call in and say, me don't know what to do, then yeah. whatever. Anyways, but really I'm doing this because um, I've been privileged. I've worked really, really hard to build something for myself. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of privilege. Um, but I feel like if we're going to make any impact in Sierra Leone, it's not if like everywhere I go, I'm the only Vicky Ramo, right? The only impact that matters is when there, you know, there's a Marina, there's an Antonia, like everybody yeah. is a boss and like doing really magnificent things. And if I'm in a position to make that kind of impact in the industry for others, I totally want to do it because that's how all these stories about Sierra Leone's rise will get up there. And every time I see Sierra Leoneans doing dope, ish that's what makes my day like i'm always you know i know indo's music like yeah. i found it i don't know him personally i only met him today but the minute i saw it and i liked it, i'm like oh my god oh my god okay 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 yeah. so putting other people on is like is what i enjoy okay. um and so i'm gonna keep doing that all right uh, leonos quickly uh with that let's just take some few messages on facebook mm -hmm. um and i'll start off uh, with eddie grant he's saying i'm rooting for um salu um to grab this award and prize, he's the brain behind Salo Messenger, a very good writer and a good content creator. Good luck. And Hussam Conte says, Vicky you're doing a fantastic job. Keep it up. Um, and Alimatu Domi Kenny says, your legacy lives on. Keep creating the space, Vicky. And I see, I, and I see she has taken the entire Facebook. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and oh yeah. she also mentioned that I like that idea. Sadly, what I see as content creators from many of us Sierra Leone and online journalists is get up to violence. Uh, <laughs> How's that? We're talking oh, about you. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I saw the post uh, 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 with Amza misquoting Left you. Left arm. 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 And another one from uh, Mutar Kalawa. He says, wow, that's my favorite blogger, Vicky Remo. Keep it up with your good initiative for journalism. And Children Podium Network, Sierra Leone says, that's my big boy, Leonos. Keep on the good work. And uh, the sky's your limit. On Sunday, we're going to hit the amusement park. And um, Eddie Grant again is saying, Mr. Bokari Matia, I will be grateful if you can gift me this your lovely attire we'll as a we'll Christmas we'll gift. We'll have to go to Kailan for that. <laughs> We'll have to go to Kailan. Uh, Alex Andrew Ture says, um, that's my boy. Keep shining. Um, you're not the genius. The world needs your light. And uh, Mohamed Kanu is asking, Vicky, how are you doing? And Ali Matu is saying, proud auntie here, Marina Kishote. Thank you. Um, there are loads of um, positive um, message. Oh, everybody uh, loves me. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who doesn't love me is on their way to loving me. Okay. Right, so th th thank you very much, uh, thank you very um, much Vicky. Vicky. Um, to you, Lenos, and end of course, um, I wish we had enough time because yeah. I, I I really wanted us to talk on um, 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 copywriting and yeah. I saw uh, a host stuff and uh, whilst I was trying to apply for 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 that. Uh, I'm so glad you're coming. Oh, I'm applying. Oh. Yeah, please. I'm applying. Please, 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 please. <laughs> I thought you said you were not please gonna please apply again. No, I'm applying. Oh, yeah. I, I had problem with copyright. No, the application stuff. ads. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, but it's, it's not easy. It's not. You not do it one day. Mm. No, no, it's, it's good. It's it's two hundred. It's two hundred. I know. I mean, it's a lot of money. Let's you know, and if people don't apply, we're not giving the money. If only like if ten people apply and only two people are excellent. We're only giving those two people, and the money will roll into next year because it's an annual prize. But I want to give the money. Like, okay. please take this money. Mm. You know?